<laughs> okay, now um, let me tell you guys what I'm talking about today. If your car is not idling where, idling means when your car is not engaged, the, the, the transmission is not functioning or the AC is not functioning. So how does your engine respond? How does it sound? So if your RPM is increasing so high, it means that there's trouble. Normally your RPM is supposed to be between 500, 600 or 800 maximum RPM or sometimes 1000 RPM. Understand? So I will show you guys how to know that. So when it's too high, there will be trouble. Well, if you are somebody who drives a car that rev on its own, immediately you turn it on from cold start, uh, you would already know that it takes about five, I mean, three to five minutes or thereabout to rev and then return back to the normal RPM. So if it's not idling at normal RPM anymore, then there is trouble. So I will teach you guys how to fix that now. So now, for instance, let us check the dashboard of this car so this is the rpm we're talking about guys that is the rpm we're talking about so oh man it's kind of um how do i film this now i think there's a shadow or oh, let me position the camera like this okay i think we are getting it clearer at this angle right here so this is the rpm board understand so Normally, it's at multiple of uh, 1,000 RPM. Now, this is on zero RPM now because the engine is not working. But when it's idling, it's supposed to idle at 1,000, which is 1,000, 1, 1,000, that is 1,000 RPM, or just one. Then, if it's idling too much, or too, if it's going too high, it hangs at two, Two and a half, which is 2,500, 3,000, and that's too much. That is bad. Understand? But normally, this engine, the engine of this car, when you start it initially, it revs to about 2,000 or above, and then comes back after about five minutes to either 1,000 or 800 RPM. So, right now, let's get that on. You can see that the engine is on now, so it's revving high right now. You can see it's going up, going up a little bit. So this process under normal circumstance is supposed to go up like this and then come back to 1000 rpm understand go up and come back to 1000 rpm so but in a situation whereby it goes higher and is increasing to 2000 rpm that's is going to 2000 rpm 3000 rpm instead of coming back there's problem understand yeah. The RPM is really very high. It's like the stuff that has gone inside. It's trying to burn them all out right now. Okay, guys, what we just experienced is as a result of. Uh, uh poor air intake which is caused by dirt that builds up in the throttle body or the throttle valve so what we are going to do now is to approach it mechanically right now this is the air intake uh housing so what we're going to do is to open it all up and then assess the throttle valve However, that may not be the only problem. We can also be having issue from the air control sensor. So now guys, let's get on with the dismantling of the air fitter housing and the air duct along with the 
airflow sensor but today we are not going to work on the airflow sensor but now you can see that the filter is very dirty so the filter we are trying to clear uh, to dust it up so all you just gotta do is to dust it up or if you have a blower you can use the blower to blow it yeah now it's clean enough but we are having a few dents right here uh, maybe we can change that in the next service appointment you can change that to the next service appointment but however it's still manageable right now as you can see so this is the major air filter that filters the air as the engine draws the air all right right now let us open up the entire air inlet uh, housing so uh what this this is 14 is this size 14 or 12 yeah size 12 so size 12 spanner uh, so much like this my triangle <laughs> spanner it opens a whole lot of places in my engines even in my generator it, ha it happens to take care of it a lot so first of all let us open the engine cover so now let's loose up the clip here and now let's forcefully pull that place out oh, okay that was pretty tough man so right now uh we might not just carry the entire you know um air assembly out for the now because first of all we want to see what we can do about uh, the throttle valve it's pretty dirty we want to clean it up first uh yeah you can see the throttle valve right here that's the throttle body so let me position the camera very well so that uh, we can clearly see what i'm talking about right here yeah this is the guy can you see the dirtiness inside there so those are part of what is blocking the proper flow of air into the engine so right now it's because carbon are built up right there so we can use this a uh, uh, choke cleaner or a carburetor cleaner so first of all let me install the straw on the carburetor cleaner and then let's get it on with now so we can just you know flush the entire carbon build up oh yes first of all what you gotta do is to try and wind the throttle wheel so so that the throttle valve can open well for you to spray the uh, injector cleaner yeah i think it's not functioning well right now it's maybe it's the positioning of the uh, yes the positioning of the cylinder can make it not to blow very well if you turn the cylinder head downwards it can be difficult to to spray so now okay we've gotten a perfect angle but however uh my body was kind of blocking it let me show you guys perfectly where how the spraying goes on can you get that can you see that yes that's it all right now uh, let us just put a few final spray i think that's all um it is pretty clean right now i think uh, we can just get um, uh, a few paper towel or tissue paper to see if there are some still some debris we need to uh, clean up inside the um inside the throttle valve okay you can see right now okay let me try and clean it properly well from the look on the tissue now the dirt are gone no more dirtiness right there the carbon buildup has been properly sprayed out with uh, the injection i mean injector cleaner well at this stage you can optionally wait for it to dry in the next 30 to 45 minutes and test run the engine or just go straight to servicing 
or replacing the air control sensor. Well guys, at this stage we are done cleaning the total valve, but we are sure this is not going to solve the problem completely. Not at all will it solve the problem because we still have uh, the throttle sensor or the air control sensor to clean because it's blocked. That is why it's actually raving high. So we got to lose this entire um, throttle body out so that we can access to dismantle the air control sensor out of it and work on it separately so we have a couple of boats to lose out right now so we've lost all the entire boat and now we are removing the the water hose i mean the water coolant yes there's a coolant um, there are two coolant pipes connected to the air hose sensor i mean the air control sensor so when you pull them out from the back side of it and then we now remove it good can you see the back side of it is still very dirty we are going to clean that then look at the air intake it's still dirty we are going to clean all that but most importantly right now this air control valve is where there is problem the air control sensor i mean to say it's where there is problem it is kind of clogged up inside however the sensor proved too stubborn to lose so i have to take it to some mechanic specialist to help me um, dismantle the sensor out of the throttle body so they just have to help me take up the action of servicing the sensor so that is what's happening right here so these guys are pretty good at uh, servicing that sensor instead of me going to buy another one they actually help me to to service the entire sensor buying a used sensor would have cost me way between five to six thousand naira. but however uh, with this guy's effort in trying to resuscitate and resurface the sensor i saved whoopee four to five thousand naira. i just paid these guys a thousand naira, and then the sensor was serviced and it's back to life so right now we're still working on this uh, 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 sensor right now these guys are pretty good at it now the sensor has been re installed back into the throttle body and uh, a couple of uh, final cleaning is being done with a carburetor cleaner so that everything will now look uh, fresh and new <laughs> these guys are good man now back to the car we are trying to reassemble the throttle body back into the car right now. That's the uh, throttle valve right here being installed back. Uh, this is cool and promising. Well, you guys are going to see the result at the end of it right now. Now guys, the last bolt has been tied and the engine is set to rave. We've just started the engine right now. Now let's check the RPM. Corolla engine starts with high RPM, just like other modern engine do. So it's starting with high RPM of about 2000 RPM right now. And let's watch it. Since all that needs to be fixed on the engine has been done, let's watch it guys. Right now it's at 2000. So within a few minutes, it will dwindle down. Okay, from the look on the dashboard right now, there's a lot of progress. The rpm is going down so the engine is sounding so well though we have redu removed the sound of the engine in order not to distract this video now it's time for us to cover the engine with the engine cover and a couple of boats have been tied back 
to signal the end of the event. Now, as you can see on the dashboard, a visit to the dashboard again shows that that five minutes of initial raving from cold start has been completed and now the RPM is down to uh, about 500 to 600 RPM, which is perfect. That is the engine is now idling well. So guys, if you have this kind of issue with your vehicle, you don't know what to do. Head on to this channel, Obilu TV, and then watch, subscribe, like, and please don't keep the knowledge to yourself. Share with others. Thank you very much. God bless you.